Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part one of a three-part video series entitled Restoring an Old Drill Press Vice. Hope you enjoy it. And the subject of this video will be the remodeling or rebuilding of this drill press vise that I bought very recently at an auction, and you may have watched the auction video. If not, check it out. There is the title, and you can find it under playlists as well, tool auctions and estate sales from Mr. Pete. So why did I buy this? You know I'm a man of many vices and I've been overdoing the vice videos, but I paid $15 for this along with a bunch of welding supplies, so I don't think anybody was really build, bidding on this. They were bidding on the welding supplies, but even uh, during the auction, the I discovered this and started uh, manipulating it and realized something crazy. Notice this, that as I turn it clockwise, the vise is opening instead of closing. Well, how crazy is that? So this is a goofy vise. I'd like to remodel it and make it right. So let's examine some of the things that are wrong on this that I need to correct. This short video clip that you're watching right now was filmed some months after I did this three-part video and this project on rebuilding this vise. And after I completed this video, I ran into a similar vise over at Lost Creek Machinery and it is built correctly with a left-hand thread. So now I'm going to show you a brief clip of me over at their shop in Ottawa, Illinois. Uh, actually manipulating their vise. I didn't buy this. It's not my vise. But it has a left hand thread which allows you to turn it clockwise in order to close it. Just exactly the opposite of this nightmare that I'm working on. Also at the end of this video there'll be several still pictures of that. So be sure and check those out and it shows the manufacturer of it and all. This is a six inch wide vise, very well built and it is for sale. Not to be confused with the green one that I'm working on. So uh, let me show you those two little clips and then back into the regular video. I see no trade name on here, so I'm thinking this might be a homemade vice or a war project vice where they were teaching students how to do machine shop work. But the handle is way too long and made of soft steel and therefore is bent in several pace places and it, it jams, so that's just no good at all. Also, I'd rather have this portion of the screw larger diameter than what it is. These are nice castings though, rather intricate. I'm not even sure how they got the sand to withdraw out of those various uh, deep recesses, but I will clean this up real well so we can examine it even a little bit further. Also, I've never seen a vise where the guide rods stuck out at the same end as the screw. So that is not right or just seems kind of crazy. But the advantage of this type of vise with the guide rods, it will open up to a very uh, large uh, amount such that we can hold very big work in it. And the jaws are four inches. And even at this point, it's almost four and a half inches uh, opening here as, and we still got well, inch and a half or two inches left here to move it uh, out. So it'll open over six inches. Now another thing here, someone has beat the daylights out of it and the guide rods here are greatly mushroomed at the end. The guide rods are held in by set screws. And I also discovered here that these 5 8 guide rods are stepped down probably to half inch where they enter the casting and those holes are blind holes. 
As I said, the guide rods are 5 8 but the screw diameter is slightly smaller. Six twelve instead of six twenty five, so I'm not sure why it's undersized. Other than whoever made it didn't have to fight with the uh, uh, the tolerances. It's uh, well made to the extent that these holes line up very well, and that's a difficult thing for anyone to do. The jaw plates here are held in by screws but there is a bad fit right here. I can actually stick my knife in there. And I tried tightening the screws and they are tight so that has to be corrected as well. Plus I'll probably mill all the surfaces and clean it up once I get it apart. Immediately in the comments of the video where I first showed this, the auction video, someone said well, someone's put it together wrong. They took it apart and put it together wrong because the guide rod should be coming out this end and the, uh, the screw should come in from this end. But I, And I thought that, well, perhaps they're right. So I came right down the basement to check it out. So let me take off this uh, collar right here and I'll show you why that is not true. So you can see here that the 5 8 rod is turned down to a half inch diameter and the thread on the end for this piece is 1 half 13. There is no thread in here, where, which is what some people suggested. So the thread is on this end and I took the screw out and this is again the unthreaded end and that's what the end of the screw looks like. And several people suggested that since the screw was in this way just turn this around and come in from this way but of course that's not going to work. So what is the fix? Well there's really two possibilities. So when I originally bought this vise, I thought this is just a perfect candidate for a left-hand thread. So what I'll do is drill this out and put a bushing in there that has a 5 8 11 left-hand thread. I'd have to buy a tap for that. And also I'll cut a new screw with a left-hand thread. And that will cause the vise to close when you turn it to the right, the conventional way. But then we're still stuck with the guide rod sticking out really what amounts to, I think, the wrong end. Can you see how beat up these ends are? I don't know why someone has pounded on them. I don't believe that it was dropped because the screw would have hit the ground before the ends of the guide rods. So let me try to get these out and see if they will withdraw. Also generally the way vices are constructed as you tighten them the shoulder here should be right here tightens up against this piece whether it be on one end or the other but in fact as you tighten this one all of the pressure was on this piece pulling in this way so you can see that if I can find that, there was, there was considerable damage to the end of the thread here where the set screw pressed against it. I have removed the two set screws from the side here and using a dead blow hammer it came apart quite easily and you can see these are stepped down. The guide rods are stepped down. And that's what it looks like. I never like the idea of blind holes because if those were stuck they would be most difficult to get out or if they had been press fitted in there. It's a very bad fit with that removable jaw. 
as is this one. It's real bad. So I will fix that. I will replace it. Now let me see if I can get these out. I think they're going to come out just fine. Yeah. These are probably reusable just by cutting off about an inch. This vise was obviously made by Bubba during his training. As if he had any training. Let me take these screws out. So here are my plans. I'm not going to make a left hand screw because that's almost as insane as, insane as the original setup. So I'm just going to reverse the screw. I'll make a new screw and it will come in from this side like this and into the thread like that and I have two choices here one is to drill this out to 5 8 because it's only half inch right now or to step down this end of the screw but I don't think that's a good idea I think I'll bore this out one size larger and and make a new screw so that's what I'm going to do and I'll start by cleaning up these real well you see what I mean by that would be a, a tricky casting to make I don't know if they used a core in there or what During the Second World War, there were a lot of training classes offered, and they made things such as this. In fact, at school I did have a manual, and we made many, many vices, but they didn't use castings, but they were along this line, and they had very nice instructions and uh, blueprints. I wish I still had some of those drawings, and had a sample of that vice. I don't have any of that stuff. Several observations as I clean this up. There's the usual damage that you see on the top of a vice jaw, so that doesn't surprise me at all. But there is welding spatter here and spatter here probably from the ground, wherever it's sat. So I'm going to take this to the abrasive machine. I won't show that and just clean these surfaces up because this won't even uh, set flat. Also, these two vice jaws are not the same thickness. That one's 359 and that one's 386. So later on, I'll either mill these to a different dimension or mill new stock that will fit on there. And then I'll probably face the whole thing off, including the jaw, so that it's all one clean surface. Another note here is that this 5 8 11 thread goes all the way through and that's a total of over two inches almost two and an eighth inch which is more thread than what you need and can sometimes be troublesome and that might be why I'm surmising this that he reduced the diameter of this so that it would go in easier otherwise often there's an interference because you have the full strength of the thread really in whatever a standard hex nut is but yet we have over two inches of, of thread okay I cleaned this up a little bit but it still looks terrible that was done on the abrasive machine that's the welding spatter I could take a little more off of that you can see signs of the original machining on the piece not a bad job but you can see the machining marks this side wasn't quite square and there is evidence that this piece was being pulled up against and causing wear there but now the screw will be going in from this side and that's not bad it just shows you where the pressure actually was this is going to be a heck of a job to clean and paint. 
I'm still not sure how they cast that, but it's pretty rough in there, as you would expect. Well, these are cleaning up okay, but it's very rough in there, and there never was any paint down in some of those recesses, so I'm going to paint this later on. I'm sticking with the green color. I will brush paint it with an artist brush, which will allow me to get paint down in there. But the very first machining operation, in my estimation, there are different ways of doing this, of course, and you're probably thinking, don't do it that way, but I'm going to set this up on the bridge port and line it up with this hole, and I'm going to drill this hole out 5 8 and matter of fact, I probably ought to go a little larger so there's some clearance so that I'm not struggling with it later, but that is the end that the screw will go through and it'll be a clearance hole again. Note carefully the setup. I have it setting on two parallels so that when I come through with the 5 8 drill I don't hit the table because the, these are 5 8 inch T-slots and I can't count on that being uh, the correct clearance. So this is a piece of half inch rod and I've got it pretty well lined up. That's probably good enough but I think I'll go ahead and put the last word in there and see how close I am. After putting the indicator in, I realized I was a full three thousandths and four and a half thousandths off respectively. So my first method was only semi-accurate at the very best, but now I'm right on. And the, the drill probably would have found the center anyway, but you know, no sense. These castings cannot be replaced, so... The only thing is I don't like using the mirror, but I could have got the coaxial indicator out, but you know, you're right, not in the mood. I'm in back gear, and that is a 5 8 drill bit. This is cast iron, so I'm not going to use any lubricant. See how it goes. Looking pretty good. Hey, safety rules. Make sure you wear safety glasses in your shop. Next, I'm going to take a half inch off of each one of the guide rods. Remember, they're mushroomed over, so we'll see if they clean up all right with that amount removed. The guide rods have been shortened by a half inch and polished up a bit. They still don't look real great because they've got pit in. But they do fit in. Let me go ahead and put them in this piece and see if everything still lines up. Well, it should. Why wouldn't it? And yes, it works fine. Now, <laughs> when Bubba made these pieces, he turned these down, but it probably was an inaccurate chuck because they are eccentric with this. So I had to find the sweet spot when I tightened up the set screw. You understand what I mean? But then it slid fine. I'm not going to redo it. But they are rougher than a cob. A lot of set screw marks on it. So it's been apart many times. Let's have a short interlude here while I talk about speed vices. This is a 3-incher that's in perfect condition. You may have watched my other videos on this, but maybe you have not. And I took a beat-up 4-inch speed vise and reconditioned it. There are videos on that. But this I bought at the same auction that I bought this. And perhaps you saw it. Well, I don't know what you saw. But th this really had Bubba's name on it. But look at this. It looks like a lunar <laughs> crater area, doesn't it? But anyway, later this winter, 
I will recondition this one. Have you ever seen one this bad? I have actually. I've seen a lot of vices this bad. I've seen them so bad with so many holes in them and eventually the, they get knocked off the drill press and I've actually seen vices break in half here because there was so little left of them. Alright, back to the real project here. This is the end of part one and this is a three-part video. Be sure and watch the other parts.